a projector which comes down and a projector screen on this side. I really want to do this. I want to live yeah. in a van. And you were like, what? <laughs> you must have thought it was crazy. I did, yeah. So this is Van Delf. No, it's not. <laughs> what? Sorry, that one's been rejected. Oh, God. oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Sorry, she's got the mouse in oh, her Oh, God, let me grab that. I don't know if I can get a hold on All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're meeting up with Will and Mira, who are living full time in the van with the cat. They've done an epic job on converting the van, so definitely stick around for the full tour. And let us know in the comments what you think. And if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Back to it. We're Will and Mira, and we live full time in our Mercedes Sprinter with our cat Lola as well. So I think I decided that I wanted to live in a van before you did. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got really obsessed with van conversions. I actually used to watch them on YouTube all the time with my flatmate, and I'd always look at them and I'd be like, "Oh, it's like I'd love to do that," but it was kind of like a like a pipe dream. Like I didn't think that I'd actually ever be able to do yeah. it. And I'd always say things like, "Oh, I really need to." I mean, I shouldn't have said this, but I need to get a boyfriend who'd be able to help me do that. Like, you know, like an engineering yeah. boyfriend, because I... This has all been planned yeah, yeah. <laughs> for years. I just, yeah. And then um, I met you yeah. and we didn't really... Talk oh no, the first time we actually met. We were talking about it, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we were talking yeah. about it because I was scrolling through YouTube and you were like, what is that? Like, what are those? I was like, yeah, no, that, they're... But, like, I really want to do this. I want to live yeah. in a van. And you were like, what? <laughs> you must have thought it was crazy. I did, yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, I think for me, um, I knew that I'd always wanted to do some traveling after uni, but had no plans whatsoever. And just, you know, I liked the idea as soon as I heard it. And then I think I also liked the idea of, of doing this as a project. The, the main motivation was to go travel. Um, yeah. But we also wanted to have somewhere that we could work from and has all the little comforts of home, things like that. When we were doing the build, we obviously did all of the gas and the water and the electrics by ourselves. And that has led to me getting a job with an electrical engineering company who design systems like this for other people living off grid. And it's, it's a really great job. So I'm able to work completely remotely and flexibly. So basically, whenever we have the time to stop for a few hours, I can just get on my laptop. We have mobile internet with us as well. And so I can just do that from yeah. wherever we are. Yeah. Before we did the van conversion, I was working as an assistant psychologist. So I was doing like autism and ADHD assessments. And I did really enjoy that as well. And that was remote. And I did that for a little bit still whilst we were like in the van. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you also did that the whole year that we were converting, yeah, which was yeah. partially what funded it. Um, yeah. Other than the budget that we had at the start, yeah. which we went over. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked full time during the whole van build. So at the moment I'm just, I'm doing some volunteering in mental health instead. I work for like a, a helpline um, and I'm really enjoying doing that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Van Delf. No, it's not. <laughs> what? Sorry, that one's been rejected. So this is our van. Yeah, she's a 2014 Mercedes Sprinter. Yeah, long wheelbase. I think we had an idea of like, uh, of what we wanted to put inside. So we really wanted a bathroom and to do that, we kind of needed a bigger space. Yeah, we bought it with this, this black trim all around the bottom, which we thought was quite nice. It makes it a little bit different from your standard white van. Yes, yeah, so we've got sliding door here. Uh, this is the exhaust for our boiler, our water heater. And then under here, it's a little bit dirty, but that's the inlet for our LPG tank. So we have an underslung 25 litre gas tank, which supplies our um, oven and our heater and our water heater as well. Yeah, Quite and nice. it lasts a really long time as well. So. Yeah, I think even when we're using the heater and the water heater every day, it lasts for almost a month at a yeah. time, which is yeah. it's pretty good. great. Yeah. On the top, just going from the back forward, we've got a skylight over the bed for a little bit of light and ventilation. We then have one big 320 watt solar panel we got cheap from a guy who was doing up a house and then in the front we have two ventilation fans one over the kitchen area and one over the bathroom as well so we've we found that in the summer months we're able to stay off grid all the time and in the autumn and winter really it's quite a lot and we don't use very much power so most of our usage is from laptop charging and our fridge yeah. is the other main thing in the winter months we found that because obviously your solar effectiveness is going to drop off massively we need to stay on a campsite maybe every four days, yeah, once or probably. twice a week sometimes. But that's been nice, especially in Scandinavia, because you get 
you know, a nice long hot shower as well. <laughs> I don't think we've minded too much. Yeah. One of the things that we, I would like to have done looking back is install a battery to battery charger as well, which is something that I recommend to people in my job now, because it just helps you top up whenever you're driving and it's a, it would be a big help in the winter months when our solar isn't working very well, but we just didn't have the budget at the start. Inside we've got our garage space under here and this was again really important to us especially the bikes because we live in a van we usually park like on the outs outskirts of cities and then just like bike in. And it's also you know enough space we found that we, we actually have more storage space than we need really but we have a big box of tools in case anything goes wrong um, we store some shoes some tables and chairs and obviously yeah our water and electric pipes and things. This part here is our hundred water up. Uh, a hundred litre water tank and yeah that's the inlet so we can fill it up there. And then the other side houses our electrical system so we have a, a 300 amp hour battery bank we've got a 2000 watt inverter charger and obviously the solar panel supplies most of that and yeah we, we learned how to do all the electrics and the water systems ourselves. A couple of hidden drawers in there as well there's one at the bottom for some tools and another one up there where we keep spare bedding and things so we've I think we've made good use of the space in general. <laughs> Um, yeah, so on this side we just have the inlet for our electrical hookup. Um, so as I say, we try not to use this very often, but in the winter months we have gone to top up our batteries, which has been useful. And then we obviously have our second window. So we have a window on each side and then the skylight as well, which we found has, has let a nice amount of light in. Um, and also the window to the cab. So it, it does feel like a nice airy space in there, I think. We also have our wastewater tank underneath. And there's also a nice scratch there from our first trip where I scraped right up against this big, what was it? Just this a big, big rock? stone plant <laughs> pot thing. <laughs> You were like distraught. I was distraught. I was, I was, we just finished and everything was perfect and I ruined it. It's like, it. this is the end. Like, I've ruined our van. <laughs> I was like, no, you haven't. The cat has her own seat actually in there because <laughs> we did keep all three seats. She sits um, like in the middle section, that's her pillow. <laughs> and she also has a seat belt too. So we clip it onto her harness. Um, yeah. And yeah, she just sits in there. <laughs> So we get asked quite a lot about living in a van with a cat and we do understand because it is a little bit weird like we get that not many <laughs> yeah. people do it and i think a lot of people ask like how did you train her to stay in the van and how do you train her to do all this stuff and if we quite like we didn't really no. train her that much we haven't she had just, to do very much yeah no. she just quickly decided that the van was her home and so she just like comes back to it whenever she yeah we don't yeah I mean, we tend to park up in quite remote areas wherever we, wherever we are. So um, we know that there's not going to be, if, if there's people and dogs milling around, then we will just keep her inside for a bit. But I think it's important to say as well, like we understand that it is like a small space and that it might necessarily not be the perfect place for a cat. So yeah. we do all of our traveling with her in mind. So we will always try and park up in places where she can run around and like go outside and do what she wants to yeah. and we'll always um like even if we're not we'll try and have her out outdoors as well so um like she is trained to go on a lead she doesn't like it very much but she is trained to go on a lead and she hikes with us as well so yeah. that was really funny that was that yeah. was great when we realized she could do that <laughs> yeah i think we were just parked up in where was it i think some random we were place just at the edge of a forest weren't we and we were going on a walk just us two and we realized that she was just like following beside us we we're like okay let's try this out like, what happens <laughs> yeah. if we just close everything up and you know look walk away and she just, she followed us for like probably, what? A long way. An she, hour? She like, walked yeah. a long way, yeah. When we do, when we hike with her, uh, we don't have her on the lead. She just kind of follows along beside, unless of course it is stated that like dogs are supposed to be on a lead, like we'll put her yeah. on a lead then as yeah. well. Um, She's not a big fan of the lead. No. I don't think so. Like what you're saying is you've got a dog. Yeah, basically. <laughs> She's, She's a, a dog. dog. <laughs> She's a little, little yeah. dog, yeah. <laughs> Obviously we had both just come out of university so the budget wasn't high so we knew we had to compromise in a few places in terms of yeah. like age and mileage and, and the general condition of the van as well. But we felt like we, we got a really good deal. It was just an empty shell of a van so we had to remove the, the flooring that was in there and give it a very thorough clean out before yeah. we even got started with anything. So we had an initial budget of 15,000 and that was including the price of the van itself. So that was mostly money that yeah. we'd saved up from working part-time jobs during your university. Oh, well, actually you, you had an extra year to work, didn't you? So you were working as a psychologist for that final year when I was finishing yeah. my masters. Yeah. Um, and I was working in a bar and for 
four years basically. So it was all of all financed by us though, like we, yeah. Like it was actually. Because a lot of people yeah. ask that and they, Oh, yeah, I don't know if this is something that you want to keep in, but yeah. we, get, we get both sides of the coin when we do our social media videos. People say, oh, you must be so rich to be able to afford to do that. And then other people say, oh, poor people are weird. Why would they want to live yeah, in a van? Yeah. It's like, we're not either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had that budget of 15,000. Um, we bought the van itself for, for 7,000. Actually, no, I'll just say in total, we spent 16,800, something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, so we were a bit over budget, but not drastically. And I think as well with you working full time for that year when we were converting it, that helps in the end. Yeah, <laughs> when we, yeah, because we, we did a little go bit over budget. budget. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess we obviously saved a lot of money by doing all the labour ourselves. So we'll show you the inside now. We start with the, um, the back of our kitchen cabinet. We had kind of that thickness of space behind the sink that we wanted to make use of. So we've got these shoe cubbies on the side are two smaller ones at the top because the sink comes down which are fine for mirrors size feet but maybe not mine so then these ones at the back go a little bit further in and then we also had some space down here so we made some funky little drawers that we we keep things in so i know yeah, we have like our, really fun to make that was fun to make yeah like a little design feature we decided to have like our kitchen countertop come out slightly over the door just because i mean mainly we wanted the sink here and the sink can also be used like as a little outdoor shower as well. So I think I can turn it on. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it like has a little shower section as well. And we can so, get yeah. our hot water supply to both the tap and the shower as well. In the summer, that's going to come in handy, I think. Yeah. So on this side, we've got our bulkhead storage and that kind of stretches all the way across the top of there. And um, we just keep some winter coats and, and our swing in there as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have a swing as well. The swing attaches like from here. So when you have a really nice view out this way, you can set it up and just have a swing. It's a bit of a novelty, but we like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we have this little shutter, which goes into our cab space. If we were ever in an emergency or anything, um, then yeah, we can we can access it through there. It's a bit difficult. It's a bit awkward, especially for <laughs> but, me. Yeah. We've got two more drawers. So that makes use of the space that's under the seats in the front. This little uh, control here is for our security system. So we have sensors on all of our doors. We have motion se like a motion sensor as well and um, a security camera for when we're not in the van. The camera we can access remotely, which is really helpful because if we ever need to leave Lola for a few hours at a time, then we can check on her and make sure that you know the temperature and everything's okay. So this is our little bathroom. It has a working shower with hot and cold water and it also has a toilet in there as well. Our toilet slides out from, you can't really see it from there, but it slides out from down here. And we did that so that we could, what I'm saying now. <laughs> we could stay off grid for, you know, extended yeah. periods of time and have our own toilet yeah. to use, I guess. It was really important for us to have, like, to us to have a shower and a bathroom. The toilet is a composting toilet. I really like how we did the slide out toilet. Mm. because it means that we have more space in there all the time and yeah it's not it's less like inconvenient with having a toilet that we have to like take out every single time we want to use the shower but um, we've got it on some heavy duty drawer runners so we can properly sit on it we get asked quite a lot about the smell but it's not that bad <laughs> it's, it's not, not that bad. it's, actually it's not quite self-contained and you know even if it is out it smells more earthy than anything else which is <laughs> that's the word i'd use anyway <laughs> we get asked that a lot as well our cat litter tray goes in the shower most of the time so she can access it and then we can also store it down here if we kind of want it away or anything so here we've just got our main electrical control panel so just working our way down that is a smoke and carbon monoxide detector we then have switches for bathroom lights the main lights above you and also the led strips around the floor switches for our two ventilation fans so one is there above kind of the kitchen area and the other one above the bathroom. Um, and then lastly, that's the button for our inverter. So that lets us use all of our household sockets that you'll see around the van as well. This one on this side is our main bin. Um, so that slides out there. So we did make a shelf up there for our plants, but as we mentioned before, they did all die. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and then in this cupboard, kind of like games and stuff up there, like books and our switch as well, which we can hook up to our projector whenever we want to play it. In the kitchen area, we have our fridge, which is a Dometic. There's not actually anything in there at the moment. <laughs> and then we have our little oven and hob as well. Yeah, we found that really useful. We love cooking 
I have, we love making yeah. our own meals in the van, um, so that's been really useful. I think we mostly like cook in the van, like we don't go out that much um, for food, we just eat in the van. And then we have all of our kind of drawers, we've got this secret little cupboard drawer as well up here. <laughs> we have a little cupboard under there, we've got all of these cupboards up here. So yeah, that's for mostly all of our food and stuff. In here we have our little like larder area. So, so this is this kind of area is all well our main clothes storage area isn't it will keeps all his clothes in this area here and then all of my clothes go in those three drawers open them up for you this step also opens up and you have space in there as well and we also have the little um, outlet there for our main heater which has been great actually we find that in 10 minutes the van is warm because it's such a small space like yeah i hate the cold so that it's been on 24 7. <laughs> yeah so i mean this is our main is sofa this? area also this is kind of doubles as our work area so what we can do is take that off there and then this middle section lifts up and we have a table that we can work from yeah so we we can have dinner or you know work our laptops from here yeah and then put it back down when we're eating. Yeah. yeah. We really wanted to make sure that we had like a space to work from. That was yeah, important. that was important because obviously we're living in it full time and, and we're working part time jobs. We need a space that we can actually sit and work. Do you think this life's all right? Like two people living in basically a box together? Just we actually talk, right? yeah. Yeah. We talked about this recently on our TikTok as well. Like it is hard. Like it's hard to live in a small space with, uh, like with two people, mm. but. I don't know. We just it don't just... argue very much, do we? <laughs> People ask that all the time. Like, where do you go when you argue with each other? And it's true. Like, there's there's no other room. <laughs> you yeah. can't go anywhere. Um, but we just, I don't know. I think we we have it... like disagreements and stuff. Yeah. But I think we don't tend to argue very much. No. And that's also why we had like the front, the like cab space. We wanted to um, separate it from the back area. So you know, if one of us does need a little bit of space, <laughs> we can go in there and like read or something. Uh, we did leave, like, like live with each other beforehand as well, so oh, we're yeah, kind of used years. to. Yeah, I guess we are used to it. being around each other all the time. Mm. So we also have storage space under both of these seats. Obviously, the majority of this one is taken up by the toilet, but there's like a storage space at the front with all of our cleaning supplies. And then under this chair, we have our laundry and our little stand for our Hoover in there as well. <laughs> So I think the, the motivation for this kind of design is we wanted the bed area to feel somewhat separate, but also you can't completely separate it, otherwise you end up with no light coming through. So we have this solid wall on this side for the larder unit, and we just made this frame that obviously has a nice big open feel to it, and we can put our little plants in the top as well. Anyway. Oh, we also have this little storage space in there as well for our laptops. Yeah, so they slide down in there. So our ceiling is made out of reclaimed pallet wood. So we spent probably like a month going around houses in Will's neighborhood, just like collecting random pallets. And then we sanded them all down and we treated them. I think we're, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Actually. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, I really love it. Because it's obviously, you look at it and it's like, it's not perfect. It's a bit rough and ready, but that's what our van is like really. Yeah. Um, and that's how the whole process was for us. It's a standard double width wise and um, we did have to get a foam mattress and cut the end off because it isn't quite long enough but you know we can have a lie down if you want. So I just about fit lengthways <laughs> and I'm about six foot tall so if anyone's yeah. doing this and you're taller than that it's something to consider. <laughs> so we also have our skylight up here which is nice for letting light in and we have a projector which comes down and a projector screen on this side um, so we, yeah, we enjoy watching movies and playing games sometimes, so that's, that's nice to have. I really like that part of it. Yeah. It's like having those little home comforts, even whilst you're traveling, like, and you're living in such a small space. Do we have anything else? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. In terms of skills and um, actually converting the van yourself, we found that we can, you can do anything with a, a YouTube video and a blog post. We didn't know how to do any of this <laughs> before we started. I think the main thing is like, just go for it. If you are, have been thinking about this for a while, yeah, you've saved up for it and you have the money, then just go for it. Like, yeah. it might take a while. It's gonna take double the time that you think it's gonna take, yeah. for sure. And the other thing is we were very fortunate to have um, parents who were happy with us staying on the driveway for a year. That's <laughs> so that was, yeah. that was very fortunate. And we understand that people, some people don't have that luxury, which is, yeah. Yeah, but I think, it's definitely achievable for people.
think I was kind of moving towards this like when I was still living at home. The idea of just living with less has been something quite big for us, or for me anyway. When you're living in such a small space, you're obviously forced to cut down on everything and live more simply. And I think that's, it's just been, not a game changer, but it's its really helped me. Like It's felt really freeing. I think. Yeah, 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 that's true. Just not having so much clutter around and you don't need it. I feel like maybe when I was slightly younger, I was a bit more like materialistic, but I've kind of learned that you just, you just don't need that stuff. Like happiness doesn't come from things, like it comes from experiences. I know that's kind of cliche, a lot of people would say that, but yeah, like being on the road and doing stuff like this, like you really feel it. Do you feel like Yeah, you definitely. But I think for me personally, like I've seen a lot of my friends go straight into jobs in engineering, which is something that I was looking at doing as well. And thinking about it now, a year later, it just doesn't appeal to me. Living in, in a house and, and going to work nine to five, like. Fair play to anyone who wants to do that, but I just think living living freely has been wonderful for us so far. We still obviously work, like as in like you still yeah, need yeah, money no, of course, yeah. to do this. I get that, but I think you don't have to necessarily do the norm. Like you don't have to do the nine to five. You can do it in different ways if you really want to. A favourite point is is the travel, the fact that we can move anywhere um, with ease. So we've done some, we've had some amazing experiences in Scandinavia so far, um, and I know we've got plans to then go and see Spain and the Balkans later on, and that's just the most amazing part of living like this, I think. Yeah, well, I'd have to say, I mean, the same, but also like going to the places that you wouldn't necessarily go to when you're flying somewhere or just going on like an organized trip or something. Just ending up in some random little towns <laughs> or like on a random mountain road and you open up the back doors and you've just got like this amazing view yeah. that you never would have seen or you might not have seen if you were just kind of flying somewhere. Did you say worst bits as well? Yeah, what's your least favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think I know what yours is. What, the toilet? <laughs> Yeah, the, the icky stuff, the, the <laughs> toilet, the wastewater tanks. Oh the, my gosh, yeah. like filling up and just like having to do all the little chores, emptying the toilet, emptying the bins, like yeah. filling up the water, emptying the wastewater tank. Things that are quite small, but take, seem to take quite a lot of time. It's just a lot of the things that you take for granted living in a house that you then have to spend twice as long doing. Yeah, I don't know what the future looks like. I would love to carry on traveling. I'd love to take the van over to the US and do like a US road trip, even Canada or something like that. We just don't know. Like, and I think that's kind of the beauty of, of doing yeah. this as well. You just... I think we're just playing it by ear at the moment. Thank you so much for listening to us. If you want to hear any more about our story or see some of our content, then we are on Instagram and TikTok at Van on a Mission. And it'll Is be linked it? below. There you go. Cruise, I don't know if I can get a hold on Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to another video there and a big thanks to Will Amira for inviting us over and showing us around. Make sure to check them out on all the socials, the links will be down below and let us know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe just to help the channel out and we'll see you on the next one.